Hello, first time viewers and subscribers. Welcome to the Kenny Hack. Uh, trying another little experiment tonight. So, looking in the forums, I've started to see uh, getting mentioned in a lot of other comments about using baking soda mixed with water to help make the image burn better. So I thought, what the heck, let's give it a try. Maybe that's something better. You know, I'm I'm out to find the best best thing I can find. Um, so that's what I kind of set up tonight. Uh, this is the same image I've ran in my last two videos, kind of trying to compare Jarvis and newsprint and 250 DPI versus 300 DPI. And so kept all the settings exactly the same as what I burned. So we're still doing an apples to apples. I'm doing 350 inches per minute at 45% power. That's what it was set at in the last couple videos. Um, the shape properties still adjusted the image the same way. Put a little gamma on it. Lowered contrast. Up the brightness. Put some enhancements on it. Um, trying to just do a straight apples to apples comparison. And just see how it comes out um, so what I did is I looking at some of the other YouTube channels and it looked like uh, kind of a common mix was to kind of put uh, two tablespoons uh, one I seen was like two tablespoons and like about a quart spray bottle and mist it onto the workpiece let it dry now I haven't done a lot of experimenting with this so I don't know if I'm doing it right but I put two big tablespoons into about one cup of water. I try to mix it really strong just to make sure I wasn't skimping on the solution. And then I, I didn't spray it on. I stirred it up really well, dabbed a cloth into it, wiped it onto the wood, and then blow, blue dry it, kind of how I do normal my, most of my prep work. Because I'm looking for something that you can do really fast and be ready to go. You're not letting stuff dry or cure overnight. And so, and as just a curiosity, I also made a mixture of baking soda and lime juice, which is kind of like an invisible ink. It's kind of always something I wanted to try just to see if like an invisible ink that normally like when you apply heat to it it, it changes color um, so I got one solution that's baking soda and water and one solution that's baking soda and lime juice and that stuff was really concentrated I just put enough lime juice it'll really foam up on you but just try to get enough to get it to dissolve and then spread that onto the wood and blue dry that that'll be my second burn test on part of this and I already got it going you can see that it's only gonna be about a 30 some minute burn at that speed for a 6x6 six six tile but I'll show you where the baking soda and water is at in the burn and like I said I, I think I mix this up pretty strong because I wanted to make sure I wasn't gonna like under dilute it but that's where it's at right now. The baking soda and water in an apples to apples comparison is barely getting the wood to etch. Like most of the videos I've seen online, people are using 60, 80, 100 watt lasers. They have unlimited power supply for what they need to do engraving with compared to what a diode has and just so you don't think I'm fooling you here is an old test board I had on the left side the ebonizing solution I use with whitewash over it the right side is pure just the ebonizing liquid or the Kenny hack or what I've been calling it and I'll just throw that on there it's not in focus it's a miller, couple millimeters high and you can see even out of focus, the laser is burning on the solution I'm using. So I'm not going to bother with the baking soda for 
maybe for laser powered stuff it might help but for diodes in an apples to apples comparison it's not even close it's not even in the realm of the ballpark um, I'm not even going to bother burning this whole, I, I was hoping to be able to do some kind of side by side put it out there in the forums like say which one looks better which one looks good but in an apples to apples comparison it's not even close it's like that might be a good solution for the, the CO2 users that have such a high power range in it. They might be able to turn it down a little bit more and make it a little bit blacker. But when you're dealing with such a limited power range that the diodes like that I'm using, it's not even close. I, I, I mean, I might be able to get a little better image down in the 3000 range if I want to slow way down but like I said so far that's not even close so I'm gonna I'm gonna stop the burn and we're gonna throw the lime juice and baking soda on see if that little bit of invisible ink kind of treatment there's a lot of recipes for invisible ink online and you, normally if you mix any kind of fruit acid like anything acidic like lime juice uh, apple juice lemon juice in with baking soda you can kind of make an invisible ink out of that that once you apply heat to it it'll make it turn darker on a piece of paper so i always wanted to see if, if i could kind of get that effect uh, similar on wood with these lasers and down at lower speeds i might see something but this this is pushed to the most extreme i can get this diode to go the fastest speed i can run and at a power range that I know my original uh, method works at. And we're try just trying other things and see if we can find something better. So let's stop that. I'm really not going to worry about getting it perfectly centered for right now. Because I really don't think judging how well just the baking soda worked that just the adding the lime juice is going to make that much difference but we'll see here we'll we'll give it a try doesn't hurt to try that's kind of what my channel is all about i'm just kind of having fun playing around seeing if i can find something that works better just to try to improve my speeds so i'm not stuck with this diodes stuck down in the super like 1000 millimeters per minute for me that's like watching paint dry it's it's like I, I know I've seen a lot of great looking products out there that look just amazing but for me it's it's running at a such a slow speed that for personal use that's fine but when I'm trying to price something out to a customer it, for me it, it's hard to either give a really fair price to the customer without shortchanging my laser time and still be competitive with the guys that have the really big nice lasers you know we're, we're never going to compete with the five six thousand dollar lasers when we have a three hundred dollar diode but if we can get the most we can out of it now all of a sudden, you know, we are, we are kind of competitive. We can price it at our work at the same price they do and have our machine paid for in just a few jobs. You know, and that's, I've already, I've only done a few jobs and had a few customers with this thing, and I've already paid it three times over. Just with three or four good customers that really like the workmanship and like the products, and individually they've bought three or four hundred dollars worth of products from me just in various different prints and different projects they wanted me to do so the turnover rate on trying to get these little machines paid for is very easy to do with a diode where if I had a ten thousand dollar laser where I have to charge a dollar per minute to get it to pay for itself I mean, you better be really good at your craft and be able to get an image done really quick 
to be able to still give your customers a great price. And so far, um, the lemon juice and baking soda is also a bust. It's not doing anything. I'd say it's actually even less than what just the bacon soda and water was. It's hardly putting a scratch into the surface. And once again, just so you can tell, and I'm, I'm not trying to fool anybody. I'm not trying to blow smoke any, up anybody's butt. I'm not making this stuff up. I'm trying to share everything I can with everybody and just all the stuff I've learned if people can, you know, get help themselves and save themselves months or worth of tests, then so be it. You know, it's if I if I wanted to keep it all to myself, I would have. And but I kind of like helping everybody and sharing what I know. And so you can see, I just threw that old test board on there. It's not centered up, but you can see it's it's burning the image in there so any of you subscribers and followers and guys who like what I'm doing and when you see see the stuff like that get mentioned in the forums it won't hurt to tell them say it might work for CO2s but give this method a try I'd really love to see somebody with the CO2 give this a try. I'd, I'd honestly don't know if they could turn their laser down low enough to where they they wouldn't just be burning. Like the first time I tried this, I had a little piece of plywood like this, and it was I had it cranked up to like 80% power, and I was just burning the veneer right off the plywood. It was just peeling that whole top layer off. I mean, I didn't have the whitewash on there, and I put it on really heavy, thick, and it, I mean, it was really dark. So I just wanted to see what it would do, but yeah, I was I was peeling the top layer of plywood off at like 5,000 millimeter speeds. I might even been down to 3,000 because at that time that was as fast as I thought I could run, you know. But now I'm up to 9,000. It's still only 45 percent power. Um, and still producing really good images. So, kind of lays the ends of the debate right there for me for the baking soda versus the ebonizing solution I, I like to use and the white wash over it to bring it back to lighter. So far, I still haven't found anything that comes close to it. I mean, I hope everybody's kind of got their thinking caps on and their chemistry set out and are trying to find something better because it, it might be out there, and I hope it is. I'd really love to find something that doesn't have that staining effect, but so far I, I just can't get away from it, and that's, I might be like most, just stuck in my ways now and it's going to take somebody else with some different kind of inspiration or a different kind of, you know, a sudden burst of inspiration and go try something new and they'll find something better. And then we'll, all of our work will get better. And that's what I'm really looking for, you know. But thanks for watching. Like, subscribe. You know, if it you find it's helping share the information with other people that are looking to get better photo prints on the wood you know I think this method can help everybody and it I mean except for the time it takes to make the ebonizing solution which takes like a week to start breaking down other than that it's a pretty simple method it doesn't take any kind of great prep work or you have to really make sure you do it exactly the same every way so I really like to see other people sharing the information, helping get it out there, and it all would really help. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next video.